The southernmost point of land is here, the South Pole. It's well established enough that there's a whole research base, a free book library, and a fun little pole where you can do a joke pretending to use it as a stripper pole, take off your coat, and then freeze to death. We've all unanimously agreed that that's as south as land gets, and if that's what this video was about, we'd already be done and I could spend the next six minutes trying to sell you a Curiosity Stream subscription. But it's not. This video is about the northernmost point of land, and I'll give you a hint. It's not the North Pole. Why? Well, the North Pole isn't on land. It's submerged under about 1,300 feet or 4,000 meters of ocean, 10 more feet of solid ice, and then about 40 more feet of floating industrial work floors where a former Greek bishop forces an enslaved race of elves to hand stitch Among Us merchandise. But if it's not the North Pole, then surely we figured out which piece of land comes closest, right? Well, it turns out, no, we're actually still looking. Throughout history, there have been numerous theories about just which pieces of land is furthest north, and all of them have been wrong. Or, at the very least, none of them have been crowned right. Despite all of the options being listed neatly in this Wikipedia art— wait, no, don't, don't show that, it'll spoil the video, sorry. Despite that, there's still no strong consensus on the matter, and there are a few reasons for that. The first, and probably most obvious reason, is that we're pretty slow to discover things on the top of the globe. Between the thick sea ice, dangerous weather, and Santa's anti-aircraft cannon, navigating the Arctic Circle is a tricky and infrequent endeavor. For most of human history, the Arctic remained almost entirely unexplored, and claims about the northernmost point of land were either wrong or, since science used to just be old guys having hunches about stuff, completely made up. The ancient Greeks believed the northernmost point on Earth was an island called Thule, which it turns out was probably either Shetland or this island in Norway, and both of those places are closer to this nude beach in Barcelona than they are to the North Pole. But when we finally realized the North Pole existed, we still didn't know what it was. This 15th century map of the Arctic depicted the common belief that the North Pole was a giant magnetic rock and, therefore, also the northernmost piece of land on Earth. This is partially true, since Santa's floating survival bunker is fortified with powerful electromagnetics, but it's still, unfortunately, not a real piece of land. It took all the way until the early 20th century for us to accurately map the top of the globe, and the first undisputed sighting of the North Pole didn't happen until 1926 when a Norwegian-Italian blimp flew from Svalbard, Norway to Teller, Alaska in what might be the least requested airline route of all time. So basically, we're still pretty new to this Arctic exploration thing, but come on, we've got Google Maps and stuff now. I can Arctic explore in my underwear without ever leaving my local public library. And that's a good point. We have some very solid guesses about what the northernmost piece of land might be. Our best guess is this place, Heretuk Avertnuslik, an island off the coast of Greenland that we only discovered two months ago. But before you go and build the world's saddest beach house there, you should probably know it'll most likely disappear in the next few years. This is the second reason that finding the northernmost piece of land is so difficult. It constantly changes. The islands in the Arctic Circle aren't so much islands as they are skeletons of dead glaciers that we killed when we decided that photos of Rick and Morty were our new currency. That is to say, they're mostly composed of deposits of gravel and dirt and they can come and go with any decently sized storm. So by the time you're watching this video, the northernmost point of land could be an entirely different pile of gravel, maybe one with a decent Starbucks for once, and it just hadn't been discovered or even created until very recently. Of course, you might hear that and think, piles of gravel haven't earned the title of piece of land. My father is an island and he worked hard to earn that honor. So for people with that kind of bigoted, narrow-minded worldview, your northernmost point of land is this place, Kaffenplumen Island, a small permanent island only about three miles or five kilometers further from the pole than Karatak of Utnoslik. If you think that some tiny empty island that'll be underwater in a few decades is no better than a pile of gravel, then the next closest contender is two and a half miles or four kilometers further, Cape Morris Jessup, the very northernmost point of mainland Greenland. That place, like all the other places I've mentioned, is still uninhabited, so if having witnesses to experience the northness of the place is essential to your definition of northernmost place, then your winner is here, Alert Canada a small research settlement on Ellesmere Island. And of course, for my American viewers who find it offensive to acknowledge the existence of other countries, then the northernmost point of land is, naturally, Utkiarvik, Alaska, which I heard some nerd made a video about once. If you want to see more videos that some nerd made about weird remote places, then oh boy do I have this streaming site for you. It's called Nebula, and in addition to hosting a number of big-budget, feature-length documentaries shot on location at some of Earth's most remote settlements by those Wendover weirdos, it's also got big-budget originals by us, and we're in post-production for a new one right now, in addition to all our normal videos early and ad-free, and extended cuts or exclusive companion videos. Nebula is like one big, great expansion pack for all your favorite educational creators. Of course, the best way to get access makes Nebula even better, because when you sign up for any CuriosityStream subscription, you get access to Nebula included. On CuriosityStream, you can watch things like this surprisingly captivating personal glimpse into the life of Jimmy Donaldson, also known as Mr. Beast, also known as the second largest independent YouTuber. 
So, you get two streaming sites for the price of one really inexpensive streaming site. Right now, it's on sale for less than $15 a year just by clicking the button on screen or heading to curiositystream.com slash HAI. And, of course, you'll be helping support HAI and countless other independent creators while you're at it.